Hi guys, today we are doing my book recap for the last month. I got through two books while I was away in Mexico and I'm gonna recap them for you and then I wanna give you a couple of books on my TBR list. So the first book that I read was You Are Not Alone by Sarah Pecknin and Greer Hendricks. This book follows, Shay Miller wants true love, but it eludes her. She wants to be fulfilled, but her job has a dead end. She wants to belong, but her life is increasingly lonely until Shay meets the Moore sisters. Cassandra and James have a life of glamorous perfection and always get what they desire. When they invite Shay into their inner circle, everything seems to get better. Shay would die for them to like her, and she might have to. This is a book that I listened to for about four hours on the plane ride there, and about four hours on the beach, around the pool, here and there, and it, it was, I like these authors. They have co-written a bunch of books. The Wife Between Us is one of my favorites. The Golden Couple, I think, was one of my favorites last year as well, but this one was just so heightened for no reason. It just, so the main character is one of those people who keeps falling into these traps of wanting to be liked so bad that you overlook glaring red flags. I always get caught up on this trope where you lie to cover up something that is easy to explain just because you feel like it might be embarrassing. I hate that trope so much because it's always such a crutch in my eyes for like, you could have just said you drove to get this. You don't have to make it seem like it wasn't a big deal. You made a mistake, you could just say, I felt really guilty, I drove to get it. Or I was here and that's why I had this. Like it's just, the whole saving face trope it's such a like plot advancement tool and sometimes it works and sometimes it's necessary and sometimes you gotta lie about something in a book to get the narrative moving on but this was used so many times throughout it. It's just frustrating to me when the solution is literally what the solution would have been at any stage of the book. So what would I give that? Probably a probably a two and a half out of five. It wasn't my favorite book. I really liked the authors, but I didn't love that. And then this was all over TikTok for a while. So I get a lot of my recommendations off of book talk. The Last Word by Taylor Adams. The neck scratching is going on altogether too long. This is a weird one. All right. This is about Emma Carpenter lives in isolation with her golden retriever, Leica, house-sitting an old beachfront home on the rainy Washington coast. Her only human contact is her enigmatic old neighbor, Deke. One day, she reads a poorly written but gruesome horror novel by author H.G. Kane and posts a one-star review that drags her into an online argument with none other than the author himself. Soon after, disturbing incidents start to occur at night. To Emma, this just can't be a coincidence. Could he be stalking her too? And it's essentially a cat and mouse slasher of the author of this book and her being isolated and her dog, which is crazy. And it was just like such a weird concept that ended up being so entertaining. I enjoyed the twists. I enjoyed the turns. I, I, I didn't love the narration switch because it does go from like, two different people, but the main character, I enjoyed her, like, her kind of giving into the situation and not immediately being like, oh my god, I'm gonna die, but instead being like, I mean, I'm pretty heavily depressed, so if this goes out one way or the other, it's gonna be fine, but I am gonna fight for my life, and more importantly, I'm gonna fight for my dog. And I do just wanna preface this in case anybody is like, I wanna read that, but I wanna make sure the dog is okay. Here's a five second spoiler for you, skip right now. The dog lives, so it's okay. But absolutely, a weird ass concept and a surprisingly great book. I wouldn't say it's like a 10 out of 10, it's not like one of my best of the year, but I went in thinking that this was gonna be a dumb, <laughs> dumb book and it exceeded my expectations. I'm gonna give this one a three and a half out of five. Right now I am finishing a book called The Burnout and I'm enjoying it so far. It was slower to get into, but that'll be in my next video. So my goal for the year was to read a finance book. So that is on my TBR for the next month. I want to read a finance, like money investment sort of book. 
And I feel like the only way that I will actually absorb what I'm reading is if I do an audiobook, which is where I do most of my books, hence the phone in my hand when I do these videos. I'm also interested to listen to more of Taylor Adams' books. I just enjoyed the twists and the turns, especially towards like the last half an hour, I was in it. I was not, like, I was on the plane ride home listening to the end of this book. I was playing a stupid fucking game on my phone for three hours, and then this was just going for the whole six hour plane ride, and it was so good. But anyways, that is it, you guys. That is my micro TBR list. I try not to add too much to it because I don't want to get, like, super overwhelmed, and I like doing two books a month. It's a very manageable amount for me, so... That is about it, and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys.